Victorians are up in arms today regarding the Andrews government's latest land tax grab, which was announced in yesterday's state budget. But before you rush out and sell your investment property, it's really important to understand what does this mean? Because there's some big headlines being thrown around right now. Firstly, what is it? Well, previously exempt land holdings of $50,000 to $100,000 will have a flat $500 per annum charge applied to them. Above $100,000, there'll be a $975 per annum charge applied every year for the next 10 years. And in addition to that, for properties over $300,000, there'll be a 0.1% surcharge applied to the land tax rate. So let's put this in perspective. On Australia, on Victoria's median house price, which is about $751,000, but I'm going to round it up to eight hundred. dollars The land value is likely to be around $500,000, perhaps less. But on a $500,000 land holding, the typical land tax would have been $775. So that was the historical land tax. Plus the $975 um, land tax surcharge for being over $100,000. Plus $200 for the 0.1% extra surcharge between $300,000 and $500,000. So what was previously $775 per annum of land tax will now be around $1,950. So it's, it's over double in terms of the land tax applied on the typical um, Victorian property. Now, in terms of what does that mean and should we then, should we therefore try and look at exiting the property because it's an extra cost? Well, keep in mind that that extra $1,200 that's being added roughly is the equivalent of 1.25% increase in the interest rates. So for instance, it's 0.25% of the property value per year that's being added. Now, it's never great to add any expenses to your investment property, particularly just for a state government land tax grab. But rents are going up at record paces right now. And the average Melbourne property or the typical Melbourne property is renting for between $550 and $700 per week for an $800,000 property with a $500,000 land value. <coughs> So to recover that $1,200 per year, you'd need to increase your rent by around $22 to $23 per week. Now that doesn't sound unachievable considering rents are actually going up $50 to $75 per week. And while we'd much rather that money be in your pocket, not going out to the government, that is obviously um, very likely to be recovered by those higher rents. And in fact, it perhaps will also lead landlords to increasing rents faster, pushing more of the burden onto the tenants. So that's not great for the tenants, and it's certainly not what the Andrews government would have been intending, but there's always an unintended consequence. And every time the state government tries to meddle with the housing market, it backfires. It backfired for the Queensland government when they looked at increasing land tax or applying a different, um, different calculation methodology that scared some investors out of the market, led to fewer houses getting constructed in Queensland following that announcement and until they actually abandoned it, ultimately because they saw that it had had a, the opposite effect of what they had hoped. Again, the Victorian government did it about five years ago and similarly, it led to a shortage of housing. It's one of the reasons why we're seeing such rapid rental growth right now in Victoria as well. So you have to look down the, I guess, down the line, not look at the immediate headlines and say, well, that's enough. I'm gonna get out because I'm sick and tired of the government meddling. It always has unintended consequences for them. There will be some people who sell their properties, particularly older Australians who are older property investors who are just fed up, don't wanna get their heads around what this means, and it might just speed up when they exit their property. It may also scare some investors away from, from actually buying property, particularly if they are looking to buy apartments because the surcharge is gonna have a big impact on affordably priced apartments because they don't get the same rent as a house. Um, so it might impact the new development of apartments. It might impact the new development of housing. And again, that leads to less supply in the future. Less supply in the future means higher rents, higher house prices. Now also keep in mind that the government, the Victorian government right now has a massive debt problem. And we know that the fastest way to get out of a debt problem is to increase your revenue. It's a lot easier to, for a government to increase its revenue than it is for a government to decrease its costs. Because decreasing its costs always upsets interest groups. But increasing its revenue, I guess they can, they can attack the housing market, but that's gonna have little benefit 
The other way to increase their revenue is to increase the size of the population. So we're gonna see Victoria's population absolutely ballooning in the coming years because they wanna bring more people in to be paying taxes, to growing the size of that economy, to pay off that debt faster and bring it down to a level that's the interest cost and the cost of servicing that debt is less than what they're receiving in tax receipts. So expect Victoria to grow faster in the coming years and again, that's at a time when potentially some of these moves that they're making in the announcements might lead to less investment over the next 12 months, ultimately leading to much higher house prices in the coming three to four years. So uh, I guess don't, don't be dismayed by the announcement. Yes, it's annoying and they should have kept, uh, should have just left it alone because the tenants are going to pay and first home buyers will end up paying a lot more in the future because of these changes. But property investors, while it does sound a bit scary, pretty confident that in the medium to long term, uh, you're going to end up in front as a result of these changes.